Mark Stein in for Rush on America's number one radio show. Uh, you may have read stories in the media over the weekend uh, about the pressure that Trump lawyers are calling, uh, coming under to bail from the case and abandon their client. Uh, one lawyer we can say certainly who is not going to do that is uh, Sydney Powell. Uh, she was uh, last on with me as a tireless champion of her client, Michael Flynn. She's now a tireless champion of her new client, uh, Donald J. Trump, in some of these post-election legal battles. And Sydney, uh, you've, you've become... Um, very concerned about this uh, Canadian company, Dominion Voting Systems. Uh, it, uh, as I said on the show, this show last week, it's, Ill it's illegal for a Canadian to give a C note to a presidential candidate, but apparently it's not in the least bit illegal for a Canadian company to end up running American elections in 33 states. What's the problem for you with this Dominion Voting Systems? Well, there are so many problems, Mark. It would be hard to articulate all of them. <laughs> Their system was specifically created and designed by Venezuelan money and interest to rig elections for Hugo Chavez and then for Maduro. It was exported internationally, um, understand, to rig an election in Argentina. And it has been used to rig this election for uh, to make the, it appear the votes were for Mr. Biden when Donald Trump won overwhelmingly. And I'm in the process of collecting evidence through a fire hose to the point it feels like a tsunami now right. of, of, of honest, patriotic people, American citizens who are coming forward to tell us exactly what was going on. And I'm, I was just got word today that 100 Dominion employees have even taken any affiliation with Dominion off their LinkedIn accounts. And Dominion scrubbing names of people like crazy. Right, right. And it, it's it started, it only came out because uh, I think a county clerk uh, happened to notice that 6,000 Trump votes had been transferred to Joe Biden, I believe, in Michigan. Uh, p presumably uh, less and alert. It, it, yeah. It also came out because some of my math experts, uh, who I know very well, immediately identified the algorithm that was being run to change the vote. Right. So that any number of batches of votes were changed by the machine, which it, by its own manual, it, it tells people it can do that. It was changed to run 67% for Biden, and votes were injected in that number by the hundreds of thousands multiple times. The exact same number and ratio were injected like three times in Wisconsin and twice in Michigan or vice versa a, a couple of 20 minutes apart or something. It, it's yeah. absurd. And for people to say there's no evidence of fraud or the people that want to cover up the fraud for whatever their personal interests are, we also have some evidence coming in that people who bought these Dominion systems for their states got special benefits on the side. Right. And, yeah, I, I mean, the, the level and width of the corruption is what the American people have felt for a long time. But we're, we're just now getting people to come forward because it's so bad and they've realized that I'm here and I will fight for it until we get it out there. I was I was very interested by by this business of the algorithm because I hadn't realized till then I'd heard of uh, uh, this company, but that uh, in in Canada they're just tabulators. In other words, they they just run optical scanners that scan paper ballots. So if you have an argument about the result, like they did, I think it was Nova Scotia, uh, New Brunswick, a couple of years back, uh, they've actually got the hardcore paper ballots and they go back and count them manually. But in America. It's a completely different, it's completely different machines they're running, which are actually voting machines and not just these optical scanners. Is there, when you, you've been going on about Gina Haspel at the CIA, I mean, the, the big, the deep state security guys who've certified that this is the cleanest election ever run in America, they're, are they, they the guys who, fired. They yeah. They need to be fired. I don't okay. know whose payroll they're on, but they need to be fired yesterday. Democrats, Elizabeth Warren and Amy Klobuchar were complaining about this uh, several years ago. Carolyn Maloney wrote a letter to people about it years ago. They're even scrubbing the articles they cited from the Internet. We've gone mm -hmm. to check on several links, and they're gone. 
this is very widespread, and I have no doubt at this point it involves the tech companies at Silicon Valley who are also trying to suppress our free speech on all of these issues to cover their own you-know-whats. Yep, absolutely. I, I, am, absolutely. I am livid about all of it. I am livid about the level of corruption. I'm livid that the FBI and the CIA haven't done anything about the complaints they've received, which just makes me want to know even more who's been paid what and and who is responsible for all of this and, and who's paid whom to get their by their elections. And, and as you say, the media and the CIA and everything say, ah, give it up, there's nothing to see here. What do you think? I take it you you agree that this case ultimately is going to wind up before those nine guys on the Supreme Court. Do you think they're going to be as eager to just sweep it under the rug? I don't think so, Mark. I think the evidence is going to be so overwhelming. And I would warn any state right now that thinks they're going to certify this election to rethink it very seriously, because what they're certifying is their own fraud and their own complicity in fraud. And I wouldn't I might even mount a class action suit later to sue them themselves for their participation in it. It's ridiculous. The legislatures and the states need to take control right now and reject the certifications of especially the swing states that were so heavily influenced by these hundreds of thousands of vote changes. And the people's own the smart tech on manual tells you that they can do this. They can change right. any vote they want to change. They can reallocate your ID from one vote to another. They can take batches of votes and trash them if they were for Trump. They can add votes for Biden. They can be manipulated any way they want to be manipulated. And they had VPN connections and access. And I think Raheem, Kass Raheem Kassan actually tweeted a message yesterday or a picture yesterday of Glenn Simpson looking behind a string of of uh, Dominion voting machines. Yeah, you, you, you said, if I understood you correctly, that they can actually program the percentages of, as, as it were. They can actually override whatever votes are in the machine and uh, exactly. adjust them up and down according, until they reach the... Why, why would that be a feature of, of a voting machine? Because it was created to do that to begin with. That's how Hugo Chavez and Maduro have ensured they won every Venezuelan election. So, so, so somehow a Canadian company wound up uh, putting Venezuelan counting machines in 33 American states. That's, that's the upshot of that, Sydney. Yeah, it was all created in, in Venezuela and designed to do this very thing, and they've installed Venezuelan machines. And then the votes actually go to Barcelona, Spain, and Frankfurt, Germany, where they can be further manipulated before they're sent back to be reported on AP and the New York Times and all that. Are you... Are you and it was caught this big this time was because Donald Trump's lead was so overwhelming, they didn't calculate the algorithm high enough, and they okay. had, well, they had to stop just, Okay, just, just, just a minute there, Sidney. I, I had no idea about that. These votes are actually counted uh, in... in, in Bar they travel halfway around the world to Barcelona before they're counted. Uh, I want to come back with you. H hang on, please, Sidney. I want to come back and talk about that some more, because that's extremely important. Mark Stein for us. More with Sidney Powell straight ahead. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for Rush Limbaugh, we return to Mark Stein. Have with us uh, the fearless attorney for both uh, Michael Flynn and the president in his legal challenges, Sidney Powell. And as Sidney mentioned, uh, they've uh, they're talking about uh, some class action suits to uh, prevent the states prematurely certifying uh, the election. And if you have some evidence of electoral fraud, you can go to Sydney's website, defendingtherepublic.org. It's well named, defendingtherepublic.org, uh, because uh, Sydney will be defending it when uh, most everybody else has fled. If you have uh, evidence of electoral fraud, particularly in these critical swing states, then do go to that website. Sydney, you, you said something incredible to me. Uh, because as odd as it is that these uh, f foreign made machines, Canadian machines with Venezuelan algorithms, are now in yeah, 33. You might as well call them Venezuelan machines because yeah. that's essentially what they are. <laughs> okay, that's. Through a number of different companies to do this. And yes, we have Venezuelan communists influenced by Cuban communists counting our votes. 
and deciding how our election is going to come out. It's an absolute outrage. It should be being investigated by the highest of our in intel investigators, preferably military, because it's a national security threat. And that's what, exactly why they've done this. And, oh, and don't forget China's influence in all of it, too. There's no, Chinese no. parts in it and Chinese money and, and graft in Venezuela. But you, you mentioned that it actually goes across the Atlantic to Barcelona and I think you said somewhere else before, yeah, before these, yeah, Frankfurt. So in other words, we've got the Germans and the Spaniards counting American votes too, which would be odd enough if, uh, if you didn't already have the Canadians, the Venezuela. I mean, there's everybody but Americans well, the Spanish involved. Part is actually those parts are actually controlled by the Venezuelans too. The counting centers over there are controlled by the Venezuelan money. But, but what is the... You're a, you're a lawyer, and you know that in any law, even in any trivial, the most trivial lawsuit, chain of custody of the evidence is the most important thing. You know, that a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy of what might have been an original document 37 versions earlier is uh, is less persuasive as evidence than the real thing. So why do we have like a complete contempt of chain of custody here where where these these votes are sent actually into foreign jurisdictions before they eventually return as hard numbers? Right, and they can. There, there are multiple means of how they alter it. They uh, they alter it to begin with by running the algorithm where they want to run it, but they can also alter it by trashing votes, adding votes, and then if they don't like it, still then they can change it again in Barcelona. Right. So, so in other words, what whatever shenanigans to use the euphemism people seem to prefer, whatever shenanigans take place in a precinct in uh, Michigan. Uh, if that's insufficient, they can they can change it yet again while while the so-called vote is out of the country. Right. How the hand count in Georgia that they're pretending to do now? Uh, they're going to try to use that to promote the argument that the Dominion fraud software stuff is a hoax. That's that's baloney. They did all kinds of different things there that include uh, kind of closing out Republican accounts and doing provisional ballots for people that then disappeared. And we've got to have access to the machines themselves to get the software and examine it. But we know there were, quote, glitches in Georgia, too. Right. And any time there was a glitch like that, there was software probably uploaded that changed things. They can change it over the Internet. It should never have had an Internet connection. Patches were put in like the day before the election, and they were not never certified. The machines aren't supposed to be touched for ages before the election. That's a violation of law by itself. I mean, but we also have, uh, at least I've been told, that there are special concerns about the governor of uh, Georgia and the secretary of state having received some kind of uh, personal benefit for rushing mm. the purchase of the Dominion machines into the state. You, you said something else uh, interesting there, that they actually were connected to the Internet. Because last time round, we were told when there was all this stuff about the Russian collusion and all the rest of it, that, that uh, voting machines are safe because voting machines are not online. They're machines, but they're not. Uh, but some guy sitting in Macedonia or St. Petersburg can't actually hack into it because it's not connected to the internet you're saying that this time round there were machines connected to the internet these machines are so hackable a 15 year old could do it and 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 does that mean that in the lawsuit you're you're you'd be you're you're asking a judge to actually let some kind of tech experts into the machines themselves to figure out what's been programmed there and what's going on in them that is definitely one of the things we need. I can't even tell you at this point whether it's in any of the existing lawsuits, but I've certainly encouraged people to put them in the ones that they filed. And do you think, you, you said you thought it was definitely going to the Supreme Court. Everyone seems to think that uh, uh, John Roberts, the Chief Justice, has no appetite for this, and his whole thing is always to, uh, as it were, diminish the significance to prevent the Supreme Court doing anything like overturning and being perceived to have overturned an election or whatever. Do you, do you think, I mean, the, these seem to me to be raise absolutely extraordinary issues 
where essentially foreign actors, we've been told for four years about foreign interference in American elections, and it turns out the, the entire U.S. election is one great act of multi-foreigner interference. Is that big enough for him to, in a sense, not be able to turn down the case? If that isn't big enough for him to take the case, he should be impeached. <laughs> That's, uh, there'd be a lot of people who'd, who'd support you on that. Thank you. Uh, uh, you're, you always uh, you, you have that thing that a really good lawyers have, which is a slight degree of in, inscrutability, uh, Sydney, when you're when you're being interviewed. Let me let me just ask you as a final question: Do you feel uh, do you feel optimistic that the truth is going to get out about this thing? I feel very optimistic the truth is going to be, it will get out. Of course, everybody on the face of the earth now is trying to suppress it, including people in our own government. But I right. won't quit until it's out and, you know, release the Kraken. Well, <laughs> indeed, release the Kraken. Well, God God bless you, Sydney. And people can go to defendingtherepublic.org if they want to know more about this. Yes. Thank, thank you so th much, Mark. Thank, thanks a lot, Sydney. It's always a pleasure, uh, even in trying times. DefendingTheRepublic.org. Uh, Sydney really ought to, uh, ought to, uh, uh, take, uh, ReleaseTheKraken.org as well. Uh, and it's, it's so, it's embarrassing to me, this, uh, I may say, uh, as a Canadian, that uh, somehow this Canadian company is in the back of this, as as uh, as Sydney put it, as Sydney put it, well, <laughs> Mr. Sladley isn't surprised. There's a uh, people go on about the international Jewish conspiracy and all the rest of it. In the end, it's the international Canadian conspiracy you have to watch out for. Although in this case, as Sydney says, it's just a, like a nice little fluffy bunny Justin Trudeau front for a Venezuelan operation.